who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel, how the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our responsive psalm this morning is number 130. Out of the depths have I, cry, have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss. O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had ended much, she had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly, when he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I speak to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We're a month since the great birthday celebrations of the church. This is usually a festive period in the life of the church and in the country. School has ended, and what a school year it's been, and we look to the summer. If Victoria Day is the unofficial start of summer, then surely Canada Day is the official start to summer. Yet we are in a place where it really doesn't feel all that festive. While we're optimistic about what may come now that so many people 
have received first and even second doses of their COVID-19 vaccine, we still don't know exactly when or what the return to pre-COVID conditions will look like. And so we wait. We are also grappling with the continued discoveries of the burials of hundreds of Indigenous children at the sites of former residential schools across the country. It is also likely there will be more discoveries yet to come. In the prayer book calendar, today is the fourth Sunday after Trinity. It is also the Sunday which falls in the midst of the octave of St. John the Baptist. The octave of St. John the Baptist begins with the feast of St. John, la fête nationale in Quebec, as St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of Quebec. The octave concludes with Canada Day a week later on July 1st, marking the anniversary of Canadian Confederation. We may do well to revive the observance of the octave of St. John the Baptist more widely in the church, not so much for patriotic jingoism and flag waving, but as an intentional period of reflection on our shared life together as Canadians. There is so very much for which we are grateful and much for which we can be proud. I'm the first to acknowledge this, and I proudly wear the red and white of the maple leaf on my shoulder every time I put on my uniform. Yet pride without reflection and introspection is hubris. I don't have any easy answers this morning for our heavy hearts and our full minds. But I will say that prayer and scripture are excellent companions for reflection. Our psalm this morning is perhaps especially fitting. Psalm 130, the De Profundis, which begins, Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. It is one of the most easily relatable and plaintive and honest expressions of emotion in all the psalms. I've been listening to John Rutter's Requiem this week, composed in 1985. It's Rutter's musical setting for the funeral mass, and he includes a setting in it for Psalm 130. I was first introduced to Rutter's Requiem when I was in theological college, and the chorale sang it for Good Friday. Rutter's haunting opening line of the De Profundis begins with a lone cello, and then the choir echoes as they sing, Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. The beauty of Psalm 130 is that it acknowledges the reality of sin, of failure, of a deep longing for things to be better than they are at present. The psalmist pushes further, though, to say that the Lord is there and that in the Lord is mercy and plenteous redemption. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for Him. In His word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With Him there is plenteous redemption. And He shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Discomfort is a part of the wilderness experience. And perhaps what we have acknowledged is that we are in the wilderness in terms of our relationship with our indigenous sisters and brothers as a country. May we look for a way to continue towards a path of reconciliation, grounded in our faith that God is with us, even in the midst of tragedy, leading us to wholeness of relationship. May we seek God's way and together may we pray the words of the Collect for the Feast of St. John the Baptist. Almighty God, you called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son and to prepare the way. 
Give your people the wisdom to see your purpose and the openness to hear your will, that we too may witness to Christ's coming and so prepare his way through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. In the worldwide Anglican communion, we pray for the Church of Pakistan. We pray for our national church, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Shane, our bishop, and Michael, our assisting bishop. In our diocesan family, we pray for St. Paul's, Renfrew, and their priest in charge, Carol Hott, the parish of West Quebec and their clergy, Eric Morin and Susan Lewis, as well as St. Thomas the Apostle Stitzville and their priest, Lee Lambert. In our deanery family, we pray for Christ Church Bells Corners and our clergy, Catherine, Mike, and Tamara. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. In our own church family, we pray for Ian Balfour and Joan Jackson Balfour, Mike, Alina, Caitlin, and David Barnes, and Kendra, Jim, Megan, and Daniel Becking. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness, forgive our sins, and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, Hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for healing, and strengthen all those who are sick in body or in mind, remembering especially this week Richard, David, Bob, and Nancy. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy One, hear our prayers and make us faithful stewards of the fragile bounty of this earth so that we may be entrusted with the riches of heaven. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, receive all we offer you this day. Enrich our lives with the gift of your Spirit, that we may follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming and gain in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body, one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those of you who wish to partake of spiritual communion, let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving 
I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. God of power, we are nourished by the riches of your grace. Raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, and fit us for his eternal kingdom, that all the world may call him Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power power working working in us can do infinitely infinitely more more than we can ask or imagine. imagine. Glory Glory to to God God from generation to generation, generation, in the the church church and in Christ Jesus, Jesus, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank you this morning for joining us by whatever means you have uh, have come to uh, to this service to worship together. Uh, your presence with us through this online offering is is a blessing to us as a parish family. So thank you for doing that. Again, please uh, continue to uh, to check in on what we're offering through uh, through Facebook Live. There's morning prayer through uh, through the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's uh, evening prayer in Compline. We have a number of educational activities on the go. So check out the uh, the church website. Uh, and if you're unsure of anything, just give a call to the office and leave a message. Uh, under the current restrictions, we're not working uh, full time in the office, but checking messages regularly. And uh, and feel free to call or email. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.